so tonight's going to be a quick review of some of the skills that we uh, covered last week. So things like bringing in the plats, um, and then again, rotating it so that it's at the orientation we like. Also, scaling it back up to the proper scale so that it's one-to-one -one in our drawing, um, drawing window. Uh, and then we're going to do a couple quick uh, new items. I'm going to talk about the triangle tool, which allows us to do or to place items on our base map um, using the, tri the triangulation method, if you have the proper uh, measurements from on site to work with. Uh, also, we are going to talk a little bit more about the um, the, the resource browser. Um, I'm going to show you where we should be able to find some additional uh, symbols for plant material, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we have those libraries loaded up onto our computers yet, so we're going to have to make sure our IT guy does that for us this week. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about landscape areas, which is another way of adding plant material or just plant beds um, graphically to your uh, planting plans. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of let you work on the plan that we started last week. As far as the existing conditions, what you have drawn right now is fine for the start uh, of the evening. We all got to a point, I think, last week where you had the sidewalk and the house and a couple trees, uh, a couple existing trees um, placed on our plan. This week, we're really focusing on the planting plan, so you can essentially use those building blocks that we have now as a starting point for your planting plan, and don't sweat the existing stuff too much. So, you now have something to do uh, in the off-season for this entire week while we have between classes um, to actually do some practice on um, completing that base map and bringing it up to a, a more finished level. And also, uh, then at the end, we're going to have questions for all of the questions you may have at the end of this course, and any questions you have about the next class as well. Okay. So real quick, I'm going to just step through a couple um, big things that we did last week. Uh, as you recall, we started back with this site. So we had spent the previous weeks um, drawing this site from measurements that were given to us, uh, from uh, measurements from the site. And then we did a planting plan. We created a planting list. Uh, again, we use the tools and reports um, menu to select a already predefined um, plant list that was then populated by Vectorworks using all of the plant material that we had already placed on the plan. So it did all of the quanti uh, quantifying and all of it, that for you. Um, if you want to edit anything from a style standpoint with this list, you can double click on it and then you'll be able to an edit window where you can change things like the title of the plant list. Uh, you can change the font if you want to mess with the font. Uh, but importantly, you cannot change the information concerning uh, the names of the plants or, importantly, the quantities of the plants. So you can't actually override that. That is all comes directly from Vectorworks. Uh, they're all linked to the uh, plant symbols that we've defined you know, over the past few weeks. So they don't really want you to change those on the fly. If you needed to make a change to the quantity, you have to um, go through and actually make the change on your plan. So if you had a client that said, oh, you know what, you know, I, I like these, but I want only half of those perennials that you have in the corner there, um, you could just go in and change the perennials and then recalculate your plan list. So it's not just going in and simply changing the numbers. Um, OK, so we got to a point where we were able to create a planting plan and a base map. A couple weeks ago, we used the saved views um, tool, which is in the navigation palette. So our classes are in the navigation palette. And then if we go along the top um, five more buttons, you'll see that we have saved views. This is where we set up the base map view. So again, we turned on all of the classes we wanted to see on our base map. And we turned off all of the classes we didn't want to see, like all of the proposed planting or planting beds. Um, so we got a view that we wanted to save on our um, window. And then we went through the steps and save views, you know, right click, go to new, and then <coughs> find all of the parameters that we're putting in and so forth. And that leaves us with a base map. So if I double click on base map, 
take me to that save view, which is like an all of the classes turned on for the base map. If I go to my planting plans save view and double click, then all of the proposed planting plan classes turn on and things like my R or removal classes turn off because that's how I have set up the save view. So we have a nice planting plan. And it allows you to jump back and forth on your drawing board from the base map to the planting plan, the added materials plan, the grading plan. You can set up some more views for those. Then, after we've done all that, we talked a little bit about exporting to PDF. Again, a PDF is a file format that allows you to send a, um, essentially a plan or a map to clients or contractors or um, other folks who are working with architects, civil engineers, and it gives them uh, your plan in a digital form that they cannot manipulate or use it. Um, so it's a nice, fairly safe way of sharing your information. Also, it's a good way if you need to send something to Kinko's or ABC, um, whether that's through email on a jump drive, you can simply put that file on a drive, take it to either of those locations, and they'll print it out nice and big for you. If you have 1424 by 36 or larger, you don't have a, a printer that can handle that. Okay. Um, we also talked last week about then taking the transition or moving to a new project. And again, the big idea here is that you simply save a copy of the last file you worked in. The assumption being that that has the most up-to-date classes that you've used. It has the most up-to-date selection of um, plant symbols that you could then apply in your new project as well. So we just simply save the copy. And then within that copy, we essentially deleted all of the drawing elements. So we really didn't want to, um, we want to start with a fresh sheet or a clean sheet. The elements we did save, though, were the title block information so that we didn't have to go through and, and redraw all of that. Um, we also saved the legend, because uh, that way you know, a lot of those symbols will reappear if we're using the same graphic attributes um, for our classes. So we could save that. And then maybe you could save uh, an existing tree or some of the other symbols um, or group symbols that you've created as well, just so you have those off to the side and you can apply them um, on your new plan. So, I'm going to jump now from the first project to the file for the second project. This is where many of us left off last week. Um, but this is our second project. When we jumped to our second project, the first thing we did is we imported the class. I'm just going to turn that class back on. So we created a plat class to place the plat on. And we use the file import and then import PDF in this case. Actually, you know what? This was a JPEG, so we use the import image file. The other one you'll probably use often is the import PDF. Just depends on what type of file you receive from uh, the client. So by using that import tool, we were able to bring in boom, this class. Um, I still have some drawing on, on top of that, but you get the point. Um, so the plat came in, it's a big image, it's sitting on top of your drawing board. When it came in, it wasn't the right size, and it was oriented you know, uh, horizontally and vertically to the page. So we, first off, went up to modify and scale objects. Modify, scale objects, here we go. And we used the symmetric by distance tool so that we could essentially allow Vectorworks um, to give us a chance to click on this button and then go down and measure a, uh, two points that we know the distance between. So we use sort of the longest points we could use. I think a good example would be to use the, um, the uh, property line because each of the property line segments has a uh, distance called out for it. So with that button selected, we could click on one, two points, the corners of that, or I should say the end point of that line segment that we know is 105 feet. And by making those two clicks, it comes back and it gives us the current distance that we just measured. And then it gives us the chance to type in the distance that we want it to be. So we're already 
in the right ballpark here was 105 feet. But if it was 35 feet, that showed up in the current distance, then we type in 105 and it would blow it up for us to get it in the right scale. Um, and then to rotate the, 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 um, the plat, we simply made sure we had selected the plat and then used the rotate tool. That could be used for other objects. And again, just the three point proce uh, process. But at the end, what we did is we made sure that the property line along the street was horizontal. It was kind of at a, a slight angle before. And what that does, of course, the north arrow is going to be a little skewed now, but we now can draw. Um, at the same alignment as the street and the sidewalks and happens to also be the same alignment as the uh, building. So everything's nice and parallel or perpendicular so that makes drawing it that much easier. Okay, were there any questions uh, or issues folks ran into or want to sort of revisit with sort of restarting with a new, um, a new file or with a copy of a file and deleting things and scaling it back up? Any questions on that process? So again, the, uh, the power of that, of doing that, um, those steps, I should say, after a project and starting a new one, is that you have all of the classes already here. And if you go into the planting tools, and you go up and do the pull down um, menu, the top, sort of the quick way of selecting plant symbols you've already defined, you'll see in the current document that it has all of the plants that I had used in the previous project as well. So it's all been populated, it's kind of ready to go. A lot of that legwork we did in the last for the last project is paying off now. And you know you don't have to spend as much time setting all that stuff up. Okay. Okay. So um, with the flat on last week and situated, uh, we were able to um, to go in and use the drawing um, on the plat to locate that building. <coughs> and we worked on the sidewalk uh, and the path out the door. We placed a couple of planting beds for existing trees that are along the curb. We also drew in. We drew in the uh, driveway and the little um, garage at the back. We also drew the property line, which is shown here in blue. And to do that, we created a new <coughs> class. We have a property line class now. Um, that's where that lives, so we can turn that on and off if we wish. Um, and we talked a little bit about the fact that even though we have the uh, dense distances and alignments for the property line segments that create the site, um, we kind of went through and we used the distances to draw those uh, the property line, um, knowing that in the real world, because plats aren't perfect, like graphically perfect, um, sometimes they've been skewed over the years with different <coughs> copies, but I've rarely been uh, or redrawn a plat where the uh, property line perfectly aligns with what's shown on the plat graphically. So you can waste a lot of time kind of like stressing over that. What you're going to have to do eventually is probably have a surveyor go out and locate the actual edges for you as a part of the construction process. Um, uh, particularly if there is any um, work along the shore that you're doing. But for the map itself, um, you just have to get it as close as you can and make any notes about any discrepancies or possible discrepancies um, so that you, the client, and the contractor all understand what's situated here. Cover your butt. Because <laughs> um, sometimes you do find that the property line on the plat, um, if you do it out with the, the um, with the alignments and the distances shown, can be off a foot or so in some cases. So that could or could not be an issue, but <coughs> it, you should always assume it will be. What are those little squares above the main name? I'm not sure what's going on there, to be honest. They kind of go away when I zoom in. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's doing that. Hopefully they, don't, they aren't there all night. It's like the ones that I needed them. No. Um, okay. So this evening, um, I told you last week that uh, to go ahead and sort of continue to plug away at this plan and the existing information on it that's, that was given to you on the printout I handed out last week, 
but that there were a couple trees I was going to help place this week. And they were on the side yard. Um, if you look at the dimensions that are given for the locations of those trees, they're all based off of the corners of the house. So they give you two locations from each corner um, to the trunk of those two trees. So that tells you that we're going to use triangulation to actually draw those trees or locate the trees. So how many of you have used triangulation or remember triangulation from back in site analysis days? Yeah. Okay. So um, essentially, just a primer, uh, if you wanted to triangulate an object on a site, if you had drawn, let's say, the backside of a house, for example, and you had you know two corners of the house, and you had a tree that's kind of out here, and you didn't feel confident enough to kind of measure down and then perpendicularly out because the distances are far enough that you know you'd lose accuracy doing that, then a second way or option of doing it would be to take a measurement from one corner of the house, so a corner that's known, an easier piece to draw, and then a measure from a, the second corner of the house. It doesn't have to be corners of the house, but if you had you know, a window here, you can pick the side of a window and the corner of the house or whatever object you can accurately already locate on your plan. But then with these two measurements, you can come in, uh, if you're doing this by hand, you'd have your drawing board, you'd draw the, the back side of the house on your drawing board, and then you'd use these two measurements to draw arc segments from the point of measurement, in this case the two corners. So you could do an arc segment here using your protractor, um, I mean your compass, compass thank you. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had to do that with a compass. <laughs> Uh, and you'd have a resulting arc that's kind of like this, and then you'd use this measurement with your compass again, and then you have a resulting arc that is similar to this. And wherever those two arcs meet, you want to leave it open? Yeah, okay. um, Where those two arc segments meet, that's your X marks the spot, and that's where your tree would be located on your plan. So, Vectorworks has a triangle tool that allows you to mimic um, that process, and we're going to use it here. Um, and again, triangulation is something, if you're doing measurements on the site, is super helpful, and you can find yourself using it quite a bit. Uh, so this is a really important um, technique in Vectorworks that's been brought up. Which is odd, because Vectorworks hasn't actually made it one of the sort of main um, tools in the basic tool palette. It's in the basic tool palette, but it is hiding underneath the 2D polygon. How hard is it to find? Yeah, it's very hard. So if you go to the basic tool palette, find 2D polygons, it's probably towards the top of the list, and then click and hold on it, you'll find that uh, a couple options pop out to the right. One is 2D polygon, and the one below it is a triangle. Everybody have that? Mm -hmm. So if you have that, go ahead and select the triangle tool. Why did they just put it? You would think they could just add another one. You know? <laughs> but, uh, um, so when you switch it to the triangle tool, you'll notice that it changes position probably in the basic tool palette because we have it alphabetical. Mm -hmm. So when you switch to triangle, it goes down to the bottom. Yeah, um, but once you've done that once, you know, unless you're looking for the 2D polygon tool in the future, which is also useful tool, um, you know, it will it will stick with triangle. So with the triangle tool selected, um, what we're going to do, so again, just as a reminder, we have these two trees here. Um, let's try and set the bottom of the two trees. Um, so, you just want to look at the screen. Uh, I'm going to use the triangle tool. And what I have to do first is define the uh, triangle length or the distance between the two points that the measurements are taken from. So that's step one. So I'm going to click on the two corners of the house, because again, that's where the measurements are taken from. I'll start at the top corner, make my first click, and I'll come down to the bottom corner and make my second click. So, two clicks. Then it pops me into the triangle setting. Um, by making those two clicks, I have already filled in side one, so that's 24 feet. I went to the top corner and then down to the bottom corner. Correct. So that length of the house is 24. 
Now I need to type in the other two sides, which are the measurements included on the plan. But there is a sequence. You want to make sure that you side two will be the distance from the point that you click that first. And then side three will be from the point that you click second. So for side two, what would that distance be in this case? So from the top corner of the house to the bottom stump of the tree. 22 feet. 22 feet. Right. Does everyone see where that comes from on the plan? I typed it, whoops, I did that. I hit return prematurely. Hold on. <laughs> Let me do that again. Okay. Yeah, I need to do that again. Okay. So what class am I supposed to be looking at now? Um you can do existing trees. Back here. So side two is 22 feet, and then side three would be the other uh, dimension from the lower corner of the house, which is what? 12. 12 feet. So I have 24. That's the resulting length from making the two clicks I, uh, I started this process with. Side two is 22 feet, which is the distance from the first corner or position that I made my click on. And then 12 feet is from the second corner that I clicked. Click OK. When I click OK, I get two resulting primes. Um, and I also get a little sort of arrow symbol in the center. What Vectorworks wants now is for me to click on the side I want the triangle to appear on. So if I move over from this side to this side, you see the little arrow point on the side, whichever side my, uh, my mouse is on. So I want to click on the side on the outside of the house. And that's the location of that. So I could at this point come down here, I'm just going to click on this other existing tree I've already drawn, click and drag while holding down the option key, and then while still holding the option key, I'm going to drop it right at that point. And I've got my key. <coughs> okay? Do I have to select it? So let's step through that together if you haven't already done it. So again, with the triangle tool selected, let's make our clicks at the top left corner of the house first, and then we'll move down and make our second click at the bottom left corner. When you have that, the window appears. 24 is side 1. Again, that comes from the two clicks. Side 2, we're going to type in 22 feet from the measurement on the plan. And then side 3 is 12 feet. Click OK. Everyone have the two rectangles? When you do, make a click on the outside of the house. So that should give you the resulting triangle and the resulting point that the existing tree should have been at. So if you have another existing tree um, symbol already on your plan, you could copy it by clicking and dragging while holding the option key down. And just let go of the mouse right on that point. So next up, we could go ahead and delete that triangle. So that is essentially a temporary construction line for us. So we can delete it. We can move on now to the second triangle. So we can step through that together. Triangle tool. And again, let's make the click up at the top corner of the house, and then the second click at the bottom corner of the house. And again, that's only because we have the measurements from those exact same corners as we did for the first one. <clears throat> Again, we get side one is 24 feet. Um, what would side two be in this example? So again, we're locating this tree using the dimension. Um, on each 13 one. and 3? That's right. So the first dimension will be 13 foot 3 and a quarter inches. So 13 feet. 3.25 will do. And then for side 3, it is the 24 feet 6.25 inches. Okay. Any 
again. Technoworks will just put in the inches at the end of that strand by default, so you don't have to type in the inches unless you really want to. But once you have those dimensions in, you can click OK, and you should see the resulting triangle. Do again to start with. And once you see these triangles, again, Vectorworks is just asking which one you want to keep. We want to keep the one on this side, so we'll move our mouse to that side, make our click, and that's the triangle we're left with. down the shift key and click on each circle yep, okay. and then right click and group it down on open. I have So if you click on the triangle and then hit delete key, oh, yeah. you'll get rid of it. So if you're not getting group on the on the right click back there. under modify in the yeah. menu above. So they're, sort of, they're kind of like next to each other in a row. Yep. So the two trees? Yeah. That's right. Two of them are weird. Yeah. The triangulation you've got 